Hey everybody, it's me, and today I'm going to show you how to create your own ratings component in Glide. Now, I know that Glide already released a new ratings component, but that ratings component doesn't roll up over user-specific columns, which means it's kind of ineffective and not very practical at the moment. So if you want to include ratings and you want to make it look pretty, here's a way that I've done it uh, as, as a stopgap until user-specific columns comes out whenever that may be. So. Let me show you first how it looks and then how it works. So here's how it looks. Um, I have an average rating. That average rating shows the average amount of stars as well, shows the amount of items reviewed. Uh, I can click on it and I can see all of the reviews and go into it and see what the review is. Um, I can submit a new review for this restaurant by clicking Submit Review where I have a choice component and this choice component lets me select the amount of stars and it'll dynamically show um, how many stars I've rated it, and give it a review, and submit. And you see that it now factors in that new item here. So this was a 4.1, and now it shows a 4.2. Now I see this 4.2 shows four stars because this is below a 4.5. If I come over here and I get rid of one of my bad reviews in here to put it above a 4.5. I'll delete that and give my app a refresh. You should see this now jumps to like a 4.8 or 4.7 and 4.6. Okay. And you see because it's now above a 4.5, I now have five stars. All right. So here's how I built that. First thing you need to do is go to your spreadsheet and create a um, ratings options sheet. I just include everything in one sheet. It's called my resources tab. And it's going to look like this. So I have rating one rate through rating five. I have a rating concatenation, and I have a value associated to that rating concatenation. So five stars is worth a five, four worth a four, three versus three, and so forth. Now, um, each of these ratings columns, okay, look like it's just filled with either one filled star or one empty star repeated. But it's not the case. Uh, actually, what this is, it's one filled star plus one space for each of these for all, for that first row. Right? The second row contains one empty star in my first rating column, plus one space, and then one filled star plus two spaces. See that? So these have two spaces, these have three spaces, these have four spaces, and this has five spaces after the star. This has one space after the empty star. This has two, this has three, and this has four. Now the reason why this is important is because these are going to be my choice components. And if I have a choice component where any of the options in the choice component are identical, it doesn't see it as a separate choice. Which means if I were to display, if I just had one filled and one empty for four times, my choice component would just be one empty star and one filled star, just those two options. It wouldn't see these four empty stars as four separate options. Now, each of these stars here need to have its own value. So if I'm in, if uh, this is what's being displayed, right? If it's displaying one full star and four empty stars, and I click this option, that means that I'm trying to rate it a five. So when I click this, I want this value and so forth, right? If I click this, I'm supposed to be selecting a value of two stars. But if I'm clicking this, I also want it to be two stars, right? This is worth three stars, this is worth three stars. This is worth four stars, this is worth four stars, this is worth four stars, right? This is worth five, this is worth five, this is worth five. Depending upon which choice component is being displayed, sneak peek, um, that's the value that I want assigned to that rating. Now, the reason why I named it as such is because I also want to create a, an array column. So that's why I have ratings one through five named specifically like this. All right, and then this is nothing special. This is just one star, two stars, three stars, and four stars, because this is just for display value. All right, so once you've created that setup, now you can come back to your app and create your form. So here I'm at that restaurant level, and I want to submit a review for the restaurant. So I created a form button that uh, points to a new sheet called reviews and I have a choice component I have a text review and I have an image 
and so forth. I'm also capturing um, who made the review, uh, the, the customer, right? The special value is a review ID. I'm capturing the time, and I'm also capturing the restaurant. Now, um, this looks like it's one choice component, but it's actually five. And if I were to remove the visibility conditions, you would see that I have five choice components that mimic these five ratings. So I would have a choice component with one star and four empty, and then two with three empty, and then three with two empty, and so forth, right? Um, but I don't want to display all those. I want to hide them. And so I need to hide them when a user clicks a certain aspect. So right now, if the rating is empty, or if the rating selects one, the first one here, I want to display the first rating, which means it's always going to have this option, either it being empty or if it's going to have the star filled with one space. And because each of these is a star filled with one space, I can set a visibility condition on this first component where the component is the star rating with a filled in star and one space. Now, if I'm a user and I want to give it three stars and I click three, okay, now I'm displaying the third rating. And this third rating is going to happen whenever I select that empty star with two spaces or a filled star with three spaces. So that's the visibility condition you need to set up. So I'm selecting it as either having a filled star with three spaces or that empty star with two spaces because both of those have the same value of three and so forth. So this one has the four star, uh, the four, this filled in star with four spaces or the empty star with three spaces. Right? This doesn't matter whether I've chosen this, chosen this, or chosen this so far. This empty star value is always going to be the same. It's that empty star with three spaces. Okay? Unless I've selected it, and now it's that filled star with four spaces. So that's the visibility condition that I've set up. Now, the I'm writing this to uh, a column called star rating at the ratings sheet. And this ratings sheet is over here, this review sheet. And it's displaying this, this is what the column I'm rating it to. And I've hidden it because it's in the spreadsheet, it doesn't really help me. Because if I see this, it looks like I've given it one empty star, but really this is a five. <laughs> because this is really an empty star with four blank spaces. And that empty star with four blank spaces, as I've shown you before, is has the value of, far, of five. Right? Four empty, uh, one empty star with four blank spaces is worth a five. So because it doesn't help me much in my spreadsheet, I've hidden it. But just know that whatever, it, that even though appearances are deceiving, it's worth something that doesn't look like it's displaying that. So I'm going to hide that now. Uh, but this is the actual value of what I've given it. Now, let's go back and um, after I've submitted a review, in my data sheet now, um, I can do a quick lookup. So here are my reviews. Here's my star display, right? And I can do a simple relation to that star display. Here's my relationship to the resources tab, right? Where I'm relating that number, uh, that star and the spaces, I'm relating it to the array column that gets set up. And so whether they've chosen that filled star with three spaces or the empty star with two spaces, because it's part of the array column, it's going to pull the same value of being a four, uh, a four, right? Or in this case, a five. And then, so after doing that relation, I do a lookup of the number and I do a lookup of the, um, the actual stars. Now, the actual stars in the reviews is what gets displayed um, at the rating level. So this, these five stars right here, that's, what's, that's what uh, these stars are displaying here. Now, I also want to have the number. And the reason why I want to have the number is so that I can calculate an average. So at the restaurant level, right, what I can do is I can now do a, uh, I can relate the kitchen name or the restaurant name to the name that gets submitted as part of the form of the reviews. And I do an average of those numbers. So here you see the numbers. And I could just display this if I wanted to, but it's going to get a little ugly, right? I could display a 4.625 
but what if it's a 3.3333333 repeating, right? Now that's gonna, that's gonna take up the entire row within my app, and it's gonna look ugly. So I do a math column, and I do a math column of that rollup, so then I truncate it at one decimal place. So this 4.625 is not So this 4.625 is, um, gets seen as a 4.6. Now I've also done a math column again to relate it to what it would be if the so this 4.625 now shows as a 4.6 and this is what I display as the average a little bit prettier now what if you want to also get the star display average meaning that if I see a 4.0 I'll see four stars but if I see a 4.6, since it's above a 4.5, I'll see five stars. Well, we can do that because we do have at least the relationship of having, in my resources tab, that five stars is a five and four stars is a four, right? So we have that uh, relationship set up. We just need to make sure that Glide can relate to that. So here's my average of a 4.6. And what I can do is this 4.6 is really worth five stars. So if I do another math column here where I say that precision is one, where I get a whole number, okay, now I get a five. Now I can't relate this number to that resources tab because even though this shows up as a five, the number is still really a 4.625, okay? So if I try to relate a 4.625 to any of these numbers, it's gonna come up with an empty response. So what you first have to do is create a template. And so I did a template called string star, where it converts this number to a string. And now I can do a relation. So now I relate this string five to the values of that resources tab here, and then it pulls back these five stars as being the star display. So a 4.625, as a string is a five, which gives me five stars. But um, a four gets shown up as a four and gives me four stars, and so forth. And now I create a little template where I combine the star average display to the number. Um, and I have parentheses in here and so forth. And I could just display this now as part of my app except that if the kitchen or the restaurant doesn't have any ratings yet, then what shows up because of the template is just some empty parentheses, which looks kind of ugly. So the very last piece of the puzzle is doing an if then, where if there are no reviews yet, if it's empty, then I'm gonna display no ratings. Otherwise, I'll display this nice little template that I've created. And that's what you see here in the restaurant, is the star display along with the average star display and the average and just so you see that it works if I click on submit review and let's say I give myself four stars here to put myself below a 4.6 you know, decent food uh, let's see I messed up with a 4.6 I am okay let's give myself three stars There we go. All right, so now at a 4.4, and now since it's because it's below a 4.5, I now only see that it's four stars. All right, so that's it. A little complicated, I know, but um, it's functional, and it's a nice stopgap until Glide um, comes up with roll up over user columns. Now, the benefit of doing this is that you can use whatever icons you want. You want to use, and it, as long as it's some sort of Unicode character or emoji or something like that, All right? But um, again, you can use whatever characters you'd like. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at robert.petito at woodward.edu. And as always, thanks for watching.